What is up YouTube and welcome to this Defenders video. If you're new, please drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. And if you have watched my previous Easter eggs videos for other shows and TV shows and movies, well, I'm going to do things a bit different here. We're going to be going through the top 10 Easter eggs in Defenders. And you can check out my whole review of the show. I was slightly a bit disappointed with it, mainly due to how the hand was handled no pun intended there of course because it would be a terrible pun if i tried to do it but you can go check that out on my channel a full review of the entire season is there but these are going to be my top 10 easter eggs for defenders season one now the show starts off with a battle between electra and danny and colleen and as he is on his way back to New York, he comes across or has a vision of Kunlun being destroyed. And he's wearing the ceremonial robes, which are very, very similar to what he is actually wearing in the comic books. Granted, it's a bit disappointing we never got the full costume for him throughout this season. And also in the Iron Fist TV show. But alas, at the end of the show, we see him on a rooftop, do it, kind of going through the motions of honouring Daredevil and actually wearing a sort of yellow and green track jacket. So I guess that's the best we can actually get, which is quite similar to what Luke Cage is having, where he's just wearing a hoodie with like a black and yellow kind of thing, wearing but just his colours. Next up, we've got Trish Talk, which was featured in a number of these shows most prominently of course in jessica jones and of course will we get her alter ego to turn up in any of these shows i hope we actually do but the incident is actually mentioned as well and of course that is the battle for new york which is a real shame they don't actually mention it in any way which leads me to actually think that these shows are actually very very close to the Avengers and it's very very close in the MCU timeline so it's not where we're just like a couple of years after the Avengers movie in the movie timeline but this fits in its slots just after Avengers which is a real shame to us that it never kind of evolved as the Avengers or the MCU timeline went on. Now number three we've got after that amazing amazing fight in the Chinese restaurant, which might have actually been better than the Midland Circle fight in the hallway, which there are some very, very good fights in this show, and the the combat, etc., is just stunning, and a nice improvement on the Iron Fist TV show, which I loved it, but those fights were a bit sloppy, and we have Stick, who leads them into the sewers after this, after this fight, which... If you are a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you will know that the Foot Clan is a direct ripoff of the hand, which is, is I say ripoff, it's more of a real homage to the hand. Now, next up, we at number four, we have got Elektra leading the hand, which is very, very similar to what we actually have in the comics, where for a time she did actually lead the hand which is a nice nice thing there as well it's getting very comic book accurate and we're getting more of a comic book accurate electra which is nice which leads us in to number five her outfit and her weapons which are actually a lot more like the comic here and that outfit looks so so cool it's not the kind of real skimpy outfit but it's a lot more like her outfit uh, maybe it's more like the daredevil movie kind of where it's kind of a tasteful outfit as opposed to what she has in the comics. And she also has her iconic weapons as well, which she uses to kill Alexandra. We saw her eye those up a bit earlier on in the show as well. Now at number five, what show, what Marvel visual product or movie or TV show would be complete without a Stan Lee moment so stanley you see him when jessica is following matt murdoch you see him on a link new york city board which is i i believe i had to look up to see what that actually was and it, it seems like it's kind of new york's version of a phone booth which is really strange to be honest but at number six we do get the dragon that iron fist actually defeated as well so when he smashes that door he there's like 
that the bones of the dragon which he defeated to become Iron Fist. He actually mentions this dragon earlier on in the show as well, where he says, like, there was a dragon, and if he's just skimping past that, which I love the fact you've got Luke Cage and Jessica Jones who are looking at this whole kind of hand, this resurrection, and they're just incredulous. So they're like the viewer or the average Joe in the team there who is who are like, what the hell? But I'm not sure if Danny Rand actually managed to see that dragon as well as it panned out. We saw where he was. So just a bit weird there that they did include that, but a nice little addition all the same. It does really hammer home the fact that Kunlun is completely destroyed. Now, in at number seven, we've got Madame Gao, who has been a incredibly powerful finger of the hand, of course. And we see her fight, which was absolutely cool. She is incredibly powerful, despite being very, very frail. However, she does adopt the crane stance, which is a lot of us have thought throughout these shows that she would actually be the crane mother, who was the ruler of Kunzi, one of the legendary part the kingdoms of heaven there albeit they didn't ex- really establish all these other kingdoms that make up that but that is the closest i think we're going to get to her being referenced as the crane mother now number eight we have got misty knight who loses her arm in quite a savage fashion and part of me was like i wish i was a reaction channel then where i just gasped i was like i wasn't expecting it to be honest because it was quite late in the show and it seems like Misty isn't really going forward in her comic book arc or storyline. But she's lost her arm there and I referenced this in my review video where she's sitting in the hospital that's owned by Danny Rand. So will we get the cyborg arm that she had in the comic? So it's getting very comic book accurate for her as well. Now at number nine, we have got... Colleen Wing, who had the fight against Bakuto, who was seemingly not dead, came back. And he the dialogue he had, and the, the whole bit was awful against Colleen Wing. And it really does do that character. The actress who played her was amazing. And she is wearing her comic book accurate outfit there, wearing her white outfit, which looked really, really cool. Now, in at number 10, the biggest one, in my opinion... We see Daredevil at the end. He is not dead as the rest of the Defenders and Karen and Foggy think. But he is in the nunnery. I guess nunnery, is that that the right term? But he is there and one of the nuns actually says, go and get Maggie. Now, Maggie, if you don't know, this is going to be big for Daredevil Season 3. Maggie is his mother. Now, she played a huge part in his storyline where... The Kingpin tried to involve her in everything, try and bring down Matt Murdock. And if it is indeed Maggie Murdock, his mother, well, this is going to be big for Daredevil Season 3, like I said. And we'll see more of him. And it will be interesting to see what she thinks of his life of a vigilante. However, that is it for this video. Please drop a like. Please do subscribe. And I'll see you soon. And goodbye.